You are high above any other name, Lord God. There's power in your name, Jesus. And Father, we choose to just accept your, your faith and your hope this morning, Lord God. Be magnified. Sing out of praise to Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. You are worthy this morning, Lord God. You are worthy, Lord. Welcome your presence, Lord God. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Jesus. Come, Lord. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. Because it's you who gives me strength. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. Cause it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible. Through you, blind eyes are open. Strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible. 
hope is in you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We put our faith and our trust in you, Jesus. We take our eyes off our circumstances, Lord. Anything that discourages, Lord. Anything that distracts. Anything that condemns, Lord. We focus on you, Lord. Your healing, your restoration, your provision, Lord God. Freedom in you, Lord Jesus. Your peace, Lord God. We thank you for your goodness, Lord God. We pray that you would come in power in this place this morning. We choose to humble our hearts, Lord, to soften our hearts, Jesus. We choose to turn to you, Lord. Father, open our spiritual eyes. Unveil them, Lord. Father, speak to us, Lord. Speak to this congregation, Lord. We need you, Holy Spirit. We are accepting of your will, Lord. We want your way, Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Good morning, LGT family and friends. Today's reading comes to us from Psalm 136, verses 1 through 4, and I invite you to join in with me. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, his love endures forever. Well, good morning, dear friends. God bless you and pray that God will just give you a wonderful Christmas season. It's Christmas time of the year. One of my very favorite times of the year, Christmas. We've been busy with our Christmas tree, getting it all set up here in our place and getting some lights on it and some little gold bulbs on it, all different things. Christmas is a wonderful time of the year. I look at that tree and I have some interesting thoughts. The tree points to heaven. The tree has an angel on top of it. The tree has lights on it. And Jesus, he's the light of the world. I see the tree, and when I was a kid, I used to see the tree, but I looked mostly at the presence and the bottom of it. But today I look at the tree, and it just helps me to think, ah, oh, this season is all about Jesus. And let's keep our focus on Jesus at Christmas time. It's interesting when you read in the scripture in Luke chapter 22, there in the 42nd verse, here was Jesus. He was up on the Mount of Olives. And he was there and he saw his future. And he saw his future and it was a difficult journey for him to deal with. Sometimes when we look at our future, it doesn't look easy. And so here he was looking at his future and he prayed to God, the Father, in heaven. It's good to pray about your future. And he prayed to God, the Father, about heaven. And what he said there in Luke 22 is, Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. He wanted to be sure that his will was the will of what God the Father had for him. Well, that's sort of a prayer that we can look at and all of us face in our lives. What do you have for me and what do you want me to do in the future? And Jesus wanted his future to be in the will of God. He wanted the will of God to be foremost in his life here on earth. And so for us, that will sometimes make quite a change. For Jesus, the will of God was a tough journey. He was there and he was on the road and the pathway to dying on the cross. And he did the will of God. He was willing to die on the cross to save your life so you can spend eternity with God in heaven. He personally gave up his life and he gave his body up. Oh, he did it all for us. It's amazing. And God has a will for all of our lives. God wants us to come to the part and point where we say, God, what is your will for my life? What do you want me to do with my life? And how do you want me to do it? 
Now, in this world in what we live in, some people have a will for their lives, and it's just a will that they've come up with, that they want, that the things that they want is an abundance of this or that or the other thing. But God wants our hearts to be yielded to him. And Jesus, his heart was for the needy people. His heart was for people who were broken. Sometimes they needed healing, so he prayed and healed them. Sometimes they were hungry and they needed to be fed, so he fed the 5,000. He did all these things as the will of God. Now, in doing the will of God, there was actually some objection against him. And we will find things in our life where we will find objection to us doing the will of God. But it's amazing when we find God's will out and what he wants for us to do, and we do the will of God, it takes, like Jesus did, a sacrifice on our parts, a sacrifice where we give our life and the purpose of our life to Jesus. And when we do that, our lives change. Christmas takes on a different meaning. It's not just about the presents and the food and the gifts that we get and the parties that we go to. Christmas is about celebrating the fact that God's Son, Jesus, came for us. And our eyes are on him in heaven. It's about this baby Jesus. He came, he lived, he died for you and me. And yes, I've been to Bethlehem. Yes, right down into the place where Jesus was born. It's almost overwhelmed to be there in the place where Jesus was born. And to think about what he did. And then I went over to Egypt, to the places where his mom and dad, Mary and Joseph, took him. And they took him there because they tried to save him in his life from him being killed by some very adamant anti-God people. Well, it was a strange feeling if you compare how I felt in Bethlehem to how I felt in Egypt, the difference of night and day. And I was happy when I left Egypt. Jesus came back, and he came back to see people's lives transformed. And in life, we've got big decisions we have to make. Big decisions about our life, what Jesus has for us to do, what the will of God is for you to do and for me to do. And it won't always be easy. It wasn't easy for Jesus. But then we sometimes have to reset our life in a focus of studying the things that he wants us to study and learn and knowing the things that he wants to teach us and going down the path he has for us. We all have to make big choices. I remember when I started out in life, I ended my school years and I was ready to move on. And so what do I do? I worked with my cousin and he built houses and he built cottages and he taught me how to do it. And so I went out and built some cottages. There was a temptation in my life to become a builder and to build cottages for people and build houses for them. It was a lot of fun. And I nailed the nails and I did all these things, and, but it wasn't the will of God for me to be a building person. So I went back to school and became a teacher. And I went and taught in schools in Toronto. And it was fascinating teaching the kids. And oh, I enjoyed what I was doing. And the superintendent came to see me, the fellow in charge of all the schools, and said, I want to offer you a new job. I want you to be the vice principal in a school. I am taken with what you like have done and what you have been able to do in this school that we're in. Now, it was a very nice and appreciative thought that he had for me, 
but it wasn't the will of God for me. And I had to move on and then go to Bible college in Peterborough and to get my graduation there. And then I went to a college in, in Edmonton, a Northwest Baptist College, and graduated from there. And then I went to a school in, in, in San Francisco and worked on getting my doctorate and all of this stuff in my role of being a pastor. I knew what God's will was. And I knew that that's what I wanted to spend my life doing. And so you will know what God's will is for you. I really got a focus on the will of God when I was at a camp meeting and I was praying and God spoke to me about being a pastor. And he spoke to me about what I needed to do. And he spoke to me about how I would have to change my life and walk away from some things that I liked into what he wanted for me to do. It took steps of faith to do it. It wasn't a matter of my knowledge. I knew how to build cottages, I built them. I knew how to teach in schools, I taught and got an offer of promotion. But it was something different God had for me to be a pastor. And many times, many, many times in life, we have to find the will of God for us in things that we want to do in terms of them being the will of God. And God in several different ways during the process of this has spoken to me and showed me his will. He's shown it to me in fascinating ways. Sometimes it's through something I see, or sometimes he sends someone along who has a word from heaven for me, or he sends an angel to speak to me. God will have a way that he will show you what his will is. And you want to know what his will is, then you have to say, like Jesus said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. It's not easy to give up some things that you have in your life that give you kind of blessings that you like to receive. It's not easy for you to open your heart to God and say, change me, teach me to know and to do your will. And I commit to do in your will. And some of the things that we have in our thoughts about God's will come out of the flesh. It's not always that God has spoken to us. Sometimes our will takes over God's will and we want to get it the way we like it. Well, God may change you in your heart's desire. He may change you in what you like. He may change you in what you do. And you can see from the life of Jesus when he did the will of God, there were some things that were very obvious with him. You see him in terms of how he cared for other people and how he did things for them and he gave things to them and he gave them a pathway so they could know God and they could find God and they could put their hearts and lives in relationship with God. That's what God will start in changing your life when you do his will. He will change the things that you know and that you like and that you do. And you'll actually like doing some things that maybe they weren't part of your life before. And you'll like going places where places of worship and you get to worship the Lord. And yes, you'll like it and you'll sing and you'll rejoice and you may dance before the Lord. He might ask you to do a very great deal of different things. You'll see it in the life of Jesus. He went out into the wilderness and he'd go there into some place like the Mount of Olives and he'd pray and he'd pray. Well, Jesus would go out for days of praying and fasting. He was doing the will of God. When you get called to do the will of God, sometimes you have to take days of submission to his will and his plan and some time spent in praying 
and just interceding with God so you do know what he wants for you to do. You know, there'd be a lot of things that the Bible talks about that you know it won't be God's will for you to do them. You'll know be that it won't be God's will for you to go down that path. And the path he has for you to go down may face a few diff ti difficult times. But he will give you the strength to go through them. He will give you his peace in his heart, in your heart, from his heart. And he will give you a knowledge of the will of God. It's a wonderful thing when you can say, I know this is God's will for me. It's not about how much money I have at the end of my life. It's not about all different kinds of things. It's I know it's the will of God and he will use me in doing his will to minister to other people and help them to grow in faith. Let's just pray. Lord Jesus, we come to you this morning. We thank you that you have a will for everyone's life. Every one of us, you have a will for us. And I ask in Jesus' name that we will be submitted in our hearts to do your will and that you will show us what your will is so that we can step out in faith and do your will. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done in me, Bob, Bob Smith. Do your will in me. Show me your path and give me the strength and the anointing to walk on that path and reject the temptations that come from the world. Reject the things that come out of what my heart once was into what your heart for me is and I will do your will. I just give you my life and submit it to you. And I thank you that you will see each one of us through. I pray your blessing on each one who is here watching this morning. Your blessing in their life and for all you have for them to do. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen.